to call us out from the depths into your freedom our chains are gone no weapon form shall prevail your word is stronger we overcome your glory your glory resounds through the age all saints declaring your great renown your kingdom forever will stand we won't be shaken we will not fear our god our god a mighty warrior you're a consuming fire in victory you reign we triumph in your name jesus the great commander you conquered death forever in victory you reign we triumph in your name Your glory resounds through the age. All states declaring your great renown. Your kingdom forever will stand. We won't be shaken. We will not fear our God. Our God, a mighty warrior. You're a consuming fire. In victory. Exalted one, no name is higher. You stand alone, our strong defender. Above you, there's no other. Above you, there's no other. And we declare your name is power. Exalted one, your name is higher. You stand. Strong defender Above you there's no other 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 I got a mighty warrior You're a consuming fire In victory you reign We triumph in your name Jesus the great commander you conquered death forever in victory you reign we triumph in your name jesus yeah your consuming fire in victory you reign we triumph in your name jesus the great commander you conquered death forever. morning. Glory! Any other body alive this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say I was lost. I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash I was born again. Forever safe in the Savior's hand You are more than my words can say I follow you, Lord, for all my days I fix my eyes following your ways Forever free and an end in grace You are, yeah. you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love never ends Take your place. You are all we need. You 
midst of the darkest In the midst of the darkest night You let your love be the shining light Breaking chains that were holding me You sent your son down to set me free Everything in this world will fade Pressing on till I see your face I will live that your will be done yeah. Somebody say, I'm alive this morning. I'm alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he lives, we live also. Yes. Hallelujah. We glorify you this morning, God. We worship you. Yes. You are worthy of praise and honor. We open our hearts to you this morning. God, we've got a better word. <laughs> all of the negativity and all of the sorrows and all of the strife and all of the things that are going on in the world today, we've got a better word. We've got a word from you. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are strong because you were strong in us. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning. We glorify you. Hallelujah. What can wash away the guilty stain? After all the wrong I've done I've already tried a thousand ways But it's never been enough What can be enough? Nothing but the blood better word was spoken oh I know it was nothing but the blood and every curse was broken oh I know it was nothing but the blood nothing but the blood and when I'm reminded of my shame to the fountain I will run every failure covered now 
say what can wash what can wash my way my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood What a powerful song. What an amazing Lord. What a precious gift of life that he's given us. Welcome. Welcome to our Family Worship Center Sunday morning service. We are so glad that you're here today. So glad you're joining with us. You know, I'll tell you the truth. Community is so important to us as a family. That just because the name of our church is Family Worship Center, that wasn't really by accident. Not trying to just find something that had a cute saying. Family means something to us. Family, the connected, uh, the connected part of our lives from one to the other. We believe community is horribly important to us. And it's important to us that you're here today. And we just want to welcome you. We're going to sing just a little bit more. And then I feel like I've got a word that the Lord's given me for you that I just want to share with you. I think will be a true blessing to you. Uh, I want to just kind of make a few announcements. We've been having church on Saturday night where we've all been coming together for a parking lot service. And it's been so much fun. I'm not kidding. People come and, and uh, you know, the, the <laughs> they can't really say amen, so they'll honk, you know. But it's just it's just something about even though everybody is in their own cars, yet there's something about the community, you know, getting together as 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 community. That I, we need that. I think God designed us that way. Did you know that? I think one of the worst things that can happen to a person is to be alone, loneliness. I think that was the first thing that God realized about mankind. He said. It's not good that man be alone. And we need one another. And I just encourage you to be a part over the next week or so. Continue to hook up with me. I'm on Facebook every day at 7 o'clock in, in the evening. And we've been doing some early morning just uh, fellowship time. It's been quarantine and caffeine. We've been doing that in the morning. And then the evening, each 7 o'clock, I've been coming and just teaching the Word of God. Some of the things that I've been talking to you about has been about the kingdom of God. Last week was about the end times. I, I described how, how it was all going to come together and how it was going to wrap up. And then this week I started teaching about the kingdom. And it's been some powerful things that I think you really need to hear. I'm going to continue that uh, uh, on tomorrow. But we would just love for you to be a part of us. Look me up. Uh, if you want more information about us, let me just say you can go to our website, fwcelgin.com. Very simple, fwcelgin.com. It'll give you their calendar events. It'll tell you all the things that's going, all the things about us. It'll give you, uh, it'll give you some materials that you can study if you need or some direction in that area. And uh, it'll also give you an opportunity that you can continue to sow with your tithing, with your offering. It's got a button there that you can push. And uh, now when it comes down, it'll say, it'll, it'll say PayPal. But if you don't want to do that on PayPal, just below that, there's another one that says you can do it on debit card or you can do it uh, just by credit card. And uh, I believe Allison has got a little tutorial on there that she can help work you through that. But I just want to say thank you for being so faithful in your giving. I appreciate that. Sometimes when people are out of church for a while, they tend to forget the Lord, but not this house. Well, I'm just going to tell you something. We've got a wonderful family, faithful to the Lord, faithful to each other. And I just want to say thank you for being so consistent and so faithful with your giving. It's very important because we're, this is just a temporary hole we're in right now. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be back in our auditorium and we're going to be praising God together. But for right now, we're just having to do with what we've got, what we've been given. And I also want to just say how much I appreciate all of our family members for being so cooperative. Uh, I, I know that when, when the governor, Governor Abbott, asked for everyone to, to please try to quarantine as much as they possibly can or, you know, keep their distance or whatever, sometimes that's, listen, that's not sometimes, that's just difficult. I was talking to Jason earlier, or maybe it was Rick, but we said, you know, the thing that we're quarantined from, we're also 
are, we're quarantined together and we're seeing husbands and wives that are trying to determine how much they really like each other. <laughs> oh, but as the fact is, is this has been a challenging time, but we're making it through this thing. It's not going to be long, but we're just trying to figure ways that we can, that we can, uh, that we can help and assist with all of the changes that are taking place. I just want to say how proud I am of Family Worship Center for being so helpful and and uh, really carrying a godly uh, presentation of help and obedience and service, not just in our church, but also to our community. Let me give you just a thought concerning our tithing and offering real quickly, and then I'm going to pray over those of you that have to give. You know, the, the Bible speaks about, now this is something I talk to our church about quite frequently in the area of giving. I talked to you about Malachi chapter 3. He talked about bringing your tithe to the Lord and offering your tithe before the Lord and said, when you do, he said, try me, test me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you can't contain. Now, I've talked to our people about this a lot of times. There's some things you can contain and some things you can't contain. You can contain money if that's all that it was. But the thing that God intended when he talked about him partnering with you with your finance, which is exactly what you're doing, you're saying, God, I honor you with the first fruit of my increase, and I'm asking you to be involved in everything that I'm doing. And so what he does is he brings opportunities to you that, that is more than you can get to. He, he's bringing opportunities and, and favor. He'll give you favor with people and opportunity with people, and it's very powerful. And so God will bring you more opportunities than you can get to. And that's the opportunity for, for uh, your growing in your relationships, your growing in your business, your growing in your in in uh, uh, the, the person of who you are. And so God wants to do that. And so as you connect with him, with your tithing, with the honoring him with the first fruit of your increase, God begins to set things in motion here and there. And he's bringing things together for your life. So your faith needs to be connected to that and involved in that. I'm expecting God to open doors for me. I'm expecting that when I go this place, God's going to give me favor. Why? Because he said he was going to pour me out more opportunities than I could get to. And I just believe that. So anyway, I want you just to take that to heart, and I want you to apply your faith to that and expect that God's going to bless you. So let me pray for you right now. Father, I want to thank you for blessing our family, uh, our immediate church family, but also there's many other people that are watching right now, Lord, that maybe they haven't had the opportunity yet to come to our church and be a part of it. But I'm just asking, Father, that they would all be included in the blessings of the Lord as they bring the first fruit of their increase. Father, I bless them right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that you would cause the seed that they sow, cause it to multiply in their life again and again and again. Lord, bless them, I pray. Bless them. Bless them, I pray, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'll tell you, Jason's going to come. He's going to sing another song. I, I, I want to say that we're going to be meeting, or we're still planning to meet next week at, uh, on Saturday at 6 o'clock, and I really would like for you to plan on being a part of that. But like I said, go to our website, fwcelgin.com. It'll give you all the calendar information and everything that you need to know. So we just, we just uh, are here today just to glorify the Lord. And they're going to sing one more, and then I'm going to bring the word to you. So, Jason, are you ready? What, what do we have here? You, all right. I wanted to just come to you this morning and, and encourage you to take the time as we sing this last song. That It's a song about declaring who God is in your life. And right now, there are so many unknowns, so many things going on in the world, and you may not know about your job. You don't, you don't know where you're finances are going to come from and there's storms raging all around but Jesus is in the midst of every storm he is the way maker through all of this as we look at the world as we look at our surroundings as our at our communities we have to begin to declare and stand up and say that Jesus you are my way maker no matter what the news says no matter what the 
government says, what even my family says. My truth is you are my way maker. You are my provider. You are my healer. You are my deliverer. You are my strong tower in the midst of this, God. And we declare this morning, God, as we worship you, God, that we're making a declaration that you are the way maker over at FWC, that you're the way maker over every family that comes to this church. God, we're declaring that you are their healer, that you are their provider. And we speak jobs. We speak jobs in favor over every family. We speak finances. We speak these things because that's our truth. Our truth is you are our way maker. Let's just worship a little bit. Oh, yeah. We open our hearts to you. We declare it, God. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Make 
worker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, just worship him this morning. Say, way, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, and that is who you are. That is who you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Just worship him this morning and say, Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Well, you know, have you ever think about that? We, we remind ourselves who God is because of the impossibilities that we face. And we start running through our mind. He's my way maker. He's my promise keeper. <laughs> my fortress, my, my healer, my... My strong help, my deliverer in time of trouble. We start thinking about all of those names that we put on him and that we call him by because it's such a comfort when we face impossibilities. Impossibilities. You know, I've been thinking about that word over the last couple of days, just impossibilities and that term. It seems like, you know, we... we run into that and we're not sure what to do with it. A lot of times when we face something that seems impossible, we try to at least go through our own strength possibly to get it, but more times than not, we have a tendency to go retreat and hide someplace. Well, I can't do that. I can't go there because that would be impossible. But impossibilities are all around you. There, <laughs> there are things that you can't do. There's things, I mean, there's things that you're going to face that within your own strength, y- you can't overcome. And our trust in the Lord is where those impossibilities become possible. Because the Bible says that with God, all things are possible. Now, here's the way that I see this, is the fact that when you find the impossible, that's usually where your stuff is. You know, the things you've been praying about, the things that you've been reaching out for, believing for, hoping for, planning for, it's, it's in the middle of all of those impossibilities. And so we need to stop looking at impossibilities as something that's unattainable. There are things that may be impossible on one level, but with God, All things are possible. So when I face the impossibilities, I go to the Lord because God wants you to face those challenges and those adversities with courage and with faith and with strength. Can I just say this to you? God doesn't want you hiding in some hole someplace. That's not his will for your life. God's got a greater plan for you, and that plan is for you to take a position to where you would, to where you attain the kingdom of God and draw that kingdom into your life to where you start walking in the realms of the miraculous, in the realms of, of, of wonders. See, that's what God's got for you. God has that for your life. And you can't be afraid of impossibilities. And I I think that's the thing that I really felt like I wanted to share with you for just a couple of moments. Because there are going to be things that seem impossible. The question is, how do you respond 
when that kind of adversity shows up. Really where we're measured. Where we're measured isn't really when things are at the very top and we're on top of the mountain and we have no challenges and everything's running perfect. Where we're really measured is when we, we face impossibilities and really that declares what's on the inside of us. What do you do when everything is going wrong? What, how do you respond when adversity is there? You know, you can have the hand of God on your life, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. There, there's a greater call from the inside of you. I'm thinking of the 12 spies that when the children of Israel were about to go into the promised land, 12, they took a, a man from each tribe and they sent them into the promised land. This was, now listen to me, it's called the promised land. <laughs> that, that means that's where God uh, destined you to go. That's where God, through covenant, promised Abraham. That's where the Lord set provision for you. He said, you're going you're gonna to obtain houses you didn't build. You're going to move into a land that you didn't cultivate. He said, I'm going to drive out the enemy before you, and you go inside there, and you're going to possess the land. And, and uh, so they had, they had one, one man from each tribe that was going to go. They got together, and they went to what they called spy out the land. We're going to go check things out and see what it looks like. And it was so interesting that out of the 12, 10 of them came back with a, what is called an evil report. Now, the reason it's called an evil report is because it was contrary to what God said. See, anytime your report is contrary to what God said about you, that's an evil report. And so 10 came back. They all saw the same thing. They all saw the land. They saw the fruit. They saw the people that were there. And 10 came back, and they said, we can't do this. There's no way possible that we can do that. They said, yeah, I will agree with you that there's a lot of good things there. We saw the good of the land, the fruit of the land, but we also saw giants, the sons of Anak. They were there. And we were in our own sight and in theirs as grasshoppers, which is amazing to me because I don't think that any one of those 10 went up to one of the giants and said, excuse me, do I look like a grasshopper to you? All of that was contrived in their own thinking, their own mind. They saw something that began to create a scenario of impossibility. We do that. We, we will face challenges in our life and it doesn't take but just a couple of moments until literally we will talk ourselves out of moving forward with whatever God's got for us. And I'm just going to tell you something. It, you're, you're not going to possess it if you're not willing to move forward. See, the, and I've got one particular message that I use, but I say when it comes to the promise of God, first we hear it, then we see it, then we say it, and then we walk toward it. That's the process that goes on. And if the enemy can intimidate you, he, well, you're afraid to move forward because you'll measure yourself against your adversities and you'll allow the apprehension of your life to cause your, your, advers your adversities to be much bigger than they are. That's what the, 12, the, the 10, they came, they said, yes, we saw that there, there, there was all of this good, but, but we saw the bad. We, there are some people who are just negative and they see the bad. Now, I don't know. I've questioned that. I wondered, I wondered, did they all see that? Or was it the fact that one or two of them just kind of spread that spirit of fear amongst them? You know, sometimes it's not just general consensus. We all agree that that's what it was, but yeah. You know, you're right about that. That was, that did look really ugly. I, you know, now that you mentioned that, and it just grows from there and grows from there. And I'm wondering, by the time that they got back, from the time they left the promised land until the time they got back to the camp, somehow their conversation had completely taken everything that God promised and said, that's not possible. That's not possible. We can't do that. Now, that could happen in your life, and as a result, you'll find yourself completely missing out on everything. 
I want to say it again. The impossible things that you see in the arena of impossible things, that's where your stuff is. <laughs> all the things that you've been reaching for and praying for and I'm holding on to God for and I'm, I'm standing in faith for, that's in that impossible. So you're going to have to understand what it is to fearlessly walk into what looks impossible to man, but with God, there's no such thing as impossible. God can make it happen for you, in you, through you. And so what these men did, they talked to one another and completely talked themselves out of the blessings of God. They talked themselves out of their inheritance. They talked themselves out of their provision. They talked themselves out of the promise. They talked themselves out of everything that God promised for them. I mean, God has given unto us, the Bible said in 2 Second, Second Peter chapter 1, he said he's given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these promises you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So the, the word of God is full of promises to you and, and, and the, the hopes of God for you. I mean, the word of God is full of those things. But you, like those ten, can talk yourself out of those things to the point that you can love God with all your heart, die and go to heaven, and never walk into the promised land that God had for you. And that's exactly what took place. They, they completely missed it. They missed it. They missed it everything. They missed it all. As a matter of fact, their carcasses died in the wilderness because of their unbelief or how they responded to the challenges. See, unbelief is not no belief. That's, that's not what that is. You believe something. You, you either believe what God said or you believe something else. I mentioned back a few weeks ago, I said that the, uh, uh, complaining is a subtle form of atheism. <laughs> Some of my friends, they, they laughed about that, but it's really the truth. We, we look at the things that are in our life, and all we can see is how bad things were. Now, let me just say something else concerning the, that 10. You know, I'll, I'll get to Joshua and Caleb in just a couple of moments, but there's something about that 10 that infected, I believe, each other. Who you hang with. You know, everybody, I, you, we've been going through this coronavirus and we're talking about social distancing. When it comes to scoffers, complainers, doubters, you need to learn some social distancing. <laughs> you need to get to the place that says, I ain't hanging out with you. I'm reminded of what took place when Jesus was going by Bethsaida. And the Bible said that there was a blind man that was there, and Jesus came to him and was going to pray for him. And it said when he was going to pray for him, here's what he did. Now, he's here at, at, at Bethsaida, and what Jesus does is he takes him by the hand and he leads him out of the city, completely takes him out of town. You know, I don't know where you live. Maybe you live in maybe you live in San Antonio. Maybe you live in Austin. Can you imagine God saying, "I want to do a miracle in you, but first of all, let me take you by the hand. I got. I'm going to drive you on the. Other, I'm going to drive you outside the city limits to pray for you." You might think, "Well, why would you do that?" That's what He did. Jesus took that man by the hand and led him out of the city limits. Took him out of the town, and then He prayed for him. Now he, Jesus had to pray for this man twice. It's interesting. Somebody tried to make something spiritual out of it and say, well, there's something very special about the second touch. That wasn't what it was at all. This man had some deep-seated uh, training. Sometimes we've been trained. I don't know if that guy belonged to the first church or the second church, but a lot of them have been trained that God won't do this for you anymore. God doesn't heal. God doesn't whatever. He prayed for him. And the man actually received a partial miracle. He says, what do you see? And the guy's described, well, I see ministries. Then he prayed for him again. Okay, so he prayed for him twice. Something was so deep, 
seated in that man. I, I really believe Jesus was having to work this man through some things that maybe was a belief about God, a belief about himself. Jesus was having to work him through it. There's a lot of times why people have difficulty receiving is because there's so much trash you've got to work them through. You've got to work them through uh, the doctrinal things that they've been taught all of their life long. Well, God don't do that. God don't like you. God's going to get you for that. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on and on and things that people believe about God. And as a result, it's very difficult for them to receive. But this particular man had to be prayed for twice. And so finally, that second time Jesus prayed for him, then he saw all men clearly. Jesus saw it. And, and now the reason why I'm saying that it took that second touch was because of what happened next. Jesus said to the man, don't go back to that town that I just took you by the hand and drug you out of. Don't go back there and don't even talk to anyone who lives there. Now, that's a pretty bold statement because whatever was in that environment affected that man so badly that, that it was just, it was, well, he couldn't, he couldn't receive. Spiritually, he couldn't receive. Now, see, we're, we're around people all over the place. I've never seen in my lifetime so much fear, panic, people who should be reasonable, people who should just have common sense and they see someone without a mask and they just panic. They, 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 now, and I'm not talking about, cause I believe me, we wash hands and we go out, we'll wear a mask or we're expected to wear a mask or whatever the case is. We, we try to respect the social distancing, but no, this is far beyond that. This is kind of a, 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 a paranoid, a paranoid environment that they've allowed themselves to be sucked into. And I don't know if they've been self-diagnosing themselves on the internet or if they're watching too much news or what they're doing, but they're panicked. There's a, they're, it's almost freakish of the fear that is here. And I'm just thinking, come on, guys. I, I'm just going to tell you right now, that's the kind of paranoia that can be toxic and it can also be contaminating. It's contagious. Other people catch it. So I don't know whether those 10 all had that when they first started. But by the time they got back to camp, all 10 were infected by it. <laughs> we can't do it. And Jesus told them, why don't go back to that town? Now, why did he say that? Well, first of all, it was Bethsaida. Now, Bethsaida was the, was the hometown of James and John. They had more gospel preached there than you could shake a stick at. They'd seen everything. They've seen miracles. They saw all these things. And Jesus spoke a curse over that town. He said, woe unto you, Bethsaida. Woe unto you, Bethsaida. If the works had been done in, in, in Sodom that were done in you, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So Jesus, because of the cynics, because of the skeptics, because of the attitudes of people that were in that town, Jesus said, this is contagious. This is a virus that is worse than the coronavirus. This is a virus that will impact you and it will literally stop the kingdom of God from functioning in your life. And so Jesus had to warn that man. And, and so we, we have to understand that, that Bethsaida, the content, the, the population rather, of Bethsaida was just toxic. So you may have friends around you that are just toxic. I see people on Facebook and I'm thinking, somebody needs to they give you an injection of something, put you out for about three months. I mean, it's just, you know, these, they're, they're screaming like a mashed cat. I'm thinking, good gracious, are you kidding me? They, they, they spread the virus of fear. They spread the virus of panic. Don't get in that camp. And I'm just going to tell you something right now. Don't hang with those people because they will contaminate you. I have no interest in hanging with negative people. You know why? <laughs> because I believe we're going to make it. I believe we're going to get through this. I believe God's going to make a way. I believe that. That's where I'm standing, and I'm not going to hang out with a bunch of scoffers. 
They don't believe in God. They don't believe in this. They don't believe. I, I've got no, I have absolutely no interest in hanging out with that. I'm not going there. I hear people complain more than just about 30 seconds. I'm finding a door. I don't, I, I do not need that. I don't need to be around people who can't see a way out. Oh, dear God, what's going to happen? The sky is falling, you know, and, and, uh, uh, you know, they, they have the ability to turn a molehill into a mountain. You know, they, they can take something that is on this level, but by the time they finish with it, it's, it's almost unrecognizable. See, that's what happens. That's what happened to the 10. I really believe that. That's what happened to the 10. I, I just don't believe because they all came out of, they all saw the miracles. They all saw the provision. They all saw the, the pillar of cloud and, the, and the, the pillar of fire. They all saw how God provided. But by the time they got back, they said, there's giants. <laughs> These are guys that just went through the Red Sea. I mean, they did this big dance on the other side of the Red Sea when all of Pharaoh's armies were in the water and they sang that song, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider, they've fallen into the sea. They saw those miracles. And then they said, there's giants. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Oh, my God, it's a miracle we've even got this far. <laughs> oh. But adversity exposed that. Communication, false communication. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners. What I see in society is a sea of scoffers, and accusers, and it's just not good. And I want to say this to you. They are not your friend. They may pose as your friend, but when they hug you, they're going to leave a virus on you that will strip you of everything good in your life. And many of them are lost and don't know it. They are. They're in bad shape. They don't, they don't even realize what kind of shape they're in. So you need to keep yourself separate. Learn some social distancing from scoffers, from doubters, from people who, and, and you might say, well, I'm not sure. Well, let me ask you this. When you meet a person and you leave them, do you feel better or do you feel worse? See, that's a good indicator right there. Sometimes you don't have to know everything, but I just know that in my heart I feel grieved. I just feel, I feel heavy. I just feel discouraged. Shoot, we're all going to die tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> it's just the people, and they, and they don't even have to say a lot. Their spirit is contagious. There's something about them that they don't even have to say much. But their spirit is contagious. And the end result is that you go back to camp with an evil report. And the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 4, it said in chapter 3 and chapter 4, it said they could not enter in because of their unbelief. And again, I want to say it again. Unbelief is not no belief. You believe something. Something has shaken us, and caused us to draw back doubters. And the end result is the fact that the promises of God aren't working in our life. and We're not moving forward. I'm just isolated. So I'm going to pray for you, and I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit that he would do something in you. I, I wrote this down. I wanted to give you this, especially when they can't see good news anymore. Being negative is an emotional problem. Being negative 
We need to stop taking that so lightly as, ah, they're just a little negative. No, their emotions are damaged to the point that it's driving their whole life into the ditch. Being negative isn't just some little thing like we pass it off to be. Being negative, when people are consistently negative, they, they are damaged emotionally. That's not the way you're supposed to be. But because of what we are, we tend to adapt to whatever comes around us. And so I want to say you need to unhook from Bethsaida. You need to unhook from the scoffers. If something leaves you down, you take that as that's poison, that's toxic. I don't need that in my life. You need to hook up with people who believe God. You need to hook up with people who aren't afraid. You need to hook up with visionaries. You need to hook up with people who says there's no such thing as impossibilities. It may have disguised itself as impossible, but that's because it's hiding the stuff that I'm believing God for. That's where my stuff is, in that impossible realm. I'm going there, and I'm going to see God make the impossible possible, and we're going to see great things happen in our life. And I'm going to pray for you right now, and I'm going to pray that your emotions will not be damaged by the... uh, condition of this culture that we live in, but that you will emotionally remain stable and your emotions won't control you. See, God has emotions. He's just not governed by them. And see, what God, emotions, emotions are what God intended for us. That's, that's the taste buds of life. We taste of life. We enjoy life through our emotions. People that don't have emotions, I think, are you dead? <laughs> I mean, you got emotions. They're there. They're there. <laughs> Dig down. Get them up. Because it's through emotions that that's the, that's the taste buds that we taste of life with. Their emotions are good. They're wonderful. Just don't be governed by them and let them make your decisions. Because sometimes your emotions react when things are high and they react when they're low. Okay? Just don't let your emotions drive the car because it'll run you into the ditch. What you need to do is maintain who you are and let the Word of God be established. Now, had these ten men stood there, had they said, what did God say about this situation? God didn't say, uh, you, you know, you're going to run into a little problem over there. There's going to be some giants and, uh, you know, you're pretty much going to die. <laughs> Have a nice day. I mean, that's, that's, that's not what God said. He said, you're going to go in and possess the land. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. It was theirs by covenant. That's where they should have gone back to. But instead, they started speaking with one another. What do you think? What do you think? Now, see, the difference between Joshua and Caleb, the ten said, I know there's grapes, but did you see the size of the giants? Joshua and Caleb said, I know there's giants, (laughs) but did you see the size of the grapes? (laughs) See, they both said the same thing but they both measured it differently. They both, they both, and as a result, you know what happened? The two went into the promised land. The ten died in their problem. They never went forward. God help us that we don't allow ourselves to be drawn into that place that we perish when God has given us such wonderful promises. So let me pray. Father, I want to thank you that you have given us promises and provisions that are phenomenal. (laughs) Oh my goodness, it's hard for me to wrap my brain around all that you've done for me and how you've so freely and abundantly and graciously given me the kingdom. Thank you, Father. I believe it. I'm going for it 100%. I'm going at it with everything within my heart. 
And I'm asking, Father, that those that are listening to me now, that they will hear what I have said and that they will keep the social distancing away from those who are scoffers and unbelievers and those who, uh, those who are against this and against that and I don't like the way that person's done it and I hate the governor and I hate the president and I hate the land and I hate Texas and uh, you know because because Lord they're scoffers they're uh, through unbelief they have poisoned their life and I pray that you would protect this group that we not be contaminated by the evil attitudes and desires and disposition of those unbelievers. Lord, I believe. <laughs> I believe. I believe. And I trust in you. I trust in you. I want you to know, Lord, that I trust in you. <sighs> I trust in you, Lord. Maybe I'm facing some giants. Maybe I'm facing some challenges. Maybe I'm having to take a long journey, but I trust in you because when I get there, you're going to bring it all in subjection under my feet. So, Lord, I bless them right now, and I speak peace to their minds, their wills, and their emotions. I speak peace to their soul that they'll not be hurt, wounded, nor driven, but Lord calls them to flourish in this. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Jason, would you come? We're just going to sing. We're just going to worship the Lord again. And I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes with us. And as they just sang the songs of victory and grace. I'm just asking you to just sing along with them or just lift your hearts. Let's just worship the Lord for just one moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are here. You are here. Moving in this place. We worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. 